Welcome to the inaugural episode, The Business of Race Podcast, where we discuss issues of race and racism, how it impacts business, and what organizations and corporations can do to more effectively address those issues while creating a better work environment for everyone. I'm your host, Regina Newkirk Rucci, the Director of Equity for 90 Forward, a local racial equity and justice nonprofit in Jacksonville, Florida. Today in the conference room, I am joined by Tracy Towsey, who is the board member, is a board member of 90 Forward, as well as a philanthropy and nonprofit consultant. She does a lot of great work in the community and has a tremendous amount of knowledge. We're so excited that you joined us today. And always Dr. Kimberly Allen, who is the CEO of 90 Forward, uh, bringing lots of expertise and wisdom to the discussion as well. Thank you, ladies, for joining us in the conference room today. Happy Thank to be you. Here. All right. So we're going to get right down to business. Um, we have a midterm election coming up next week. And I always really hate the term midterm. I'm like, it depends on whose term you're talking about. But we sort of base this off of the presidential election. Mm -hmm. And I think oftentimes this is the one that gets skipped over, even though a lot of local positions are being decided. That could be secretaries of state, governors, mayors, um, you know, tax assessors, judges, uh, uh, school board members, a lot of different local people who are changing the climate. And so as we talk about this, I want to talk about how businesses and corporations can really include civic engagement as a part of their corporate social responsibility landscape. Because I think this is a unique opportunity. And sometimes I think we've been trained, right? Like the two things you don't talk about are politics and religion, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, but what are some ways that employers can really promote civic engagement without being partisan? Yeah, it's a good question. And I think especially in this environment where I think there's this fear that politics is so toxic that I think a lot of folks are feel like it's safer not to mention it at all. But, you know, businesses are part of our community they're, you know, they're, they're part of our, our civic culture, too. And um, employees, it's important for their employees to feel like they can, um, they have the space and the time to participate in the system. And so um, I think at a bare minimum, just sort of making sure that you are um, giving your employees time off to vote if you're able to. If you're, you know, I, I get we're in a climate where they're, you know, they're, shortages of workers and and you know but at a maybe if if you can't give folks time off to vote you could at least um, share information in the workplace about polling places about early voting dates um giving information um um, but i also you know i think a lot of folks are in a position to be able to give their employees time to say you know if you want to vote on your way into the office you know it's fine if you come in an hour late today or you can have an extra hour at lunch um you know, it's, it's not that hard, particularly in an office setting, to be able to give that kind of leeway. Yeah, and I think a lot of corporations are already involved civically. They have PACs. They are, you know, lobbying mm-hmm. different um, lawmakers and legislators. And so they're already involved. Mm-hmm. Um, the extent to which employees know that um, is probably a, 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 a different conversation that, that we can certainly talk about. But um, as they are civically involved and engaged, um, giving space and time, I agree, stay, uh, Tracy, I'm going to call you Tracy, um, Tracy, <laughs> um, I agree that, that giving employees time and space to also exercise their civic mm-hmm. duty, um, and, and civic engagement is a lot of things, right? Mm-hmm. We're talking about voting in particular because that's on the horizon, right? But, you know, we give time for jury duty, right? Do yeah. we give time if folks want to um, attend city council meetings and attend, you know, community um you know, neighborhood meetings or serve on commissions and boards, mm-hmm. right? There's lots of space for leaders to participate like in nonprofit boards, but cities also have commissions and boards for community members to participate. And that is also um, civic engagement. And so how do we um, create work environments that, that give people the leeway and the space to be able to vote mm-hmm. and to serve civically just as they do um, with things like PACs and stuff? 
Well, as you all are talking about this, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, I, I'm an employer. You're talking about me losing production time. You're talking about these things costing me money and paying employees while they're not even here. They're going to go vote or going to go participate in this. Why should I do that as an employer? I'm trying to make money. Um, you know, I want my business to be successful. You voting doesn't have anything to do with my production line. Um, why should why should I do this? Yeah, I think I, I come at this from two different angles, and one is just we we are all going to live with the the consequences of the leadership that we have. And the you know the the political system that we have, and so it's you know businesses like every other you know entity in our society, you know that's it's just they it's their obligation as well. Just like you mentioned for jury duty, they don't have an, a chance. They they don't have a choice of whether they give people time off for jury jury duty. It's just um, we consider it in our civic culture just something that you're obligated to do. And I, I think that voting should be considered one of those highest priorities as well. That um, that's just we. We don't run as a society unless everyone has a chance to participate fully. Um, and so there's the obligation part. But then there's also the reward. And I think um, businesses where employees feel like they are able to you know, to work um, with a company, but then also be their full selves um, and be fully able to participate in their community and, uh, you know, and as well as in their, their government, I think they will be more satisfied. And there's a lot of research that actually does show that um, businesses that prioritize civic engagement have employees who feel um, more committed to the company. It will stay longer. Um, and so it ultimately does affect the bottom line. I think particularly in a climate right now where you know, being able to retain employees is important you know, we have to think about those things. It's it's part of letting people bring their whole selves to work. So civic engagement can actually be an effective retention strategy for employees. Ab- absolutely, it has a it has a bottom line payoff as well as the the sort of you know just being a good citizen. Yeah, I agree. I think um, as a society, like you said, we all live and die by the 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 rules of <laughs> that we vote on the people who make the rules and um businesses are not exempt um from that but i also think there's a value proposition here like what mm-hmm. what does the company value um and i think it says a lot if you are telling your employees we value the democratic process mm-hmm. and that means that everybody has the time and space to go and exercise their right to vote um, when that day comes and the day isn't often right mm-hmm. um, it comes if you're you know every couple of years and then you have you know maybe special elections here and there and so you know one day mm-hmm. every few years is not going to just completely topple your bottom line and I agree it's going to um, help it but it's going to help it in in a bigger societal way if we are all participating um, in our in our civic obligation. Mm-hmm. So I know we're talking a lot about voting because of the election next week, but I'm thinking about, you know, maybe some jobs like if you're in a hospital, um, you know, this is the shift and we've got to have coverage. Yeah. People's lives depend on it. Or if you're a bus driver, you know, things where you can't give the time off mm-hmm. to go vote per se because of the structure of the job. Mm-hmm. What are some other things that organizations can do to really show that they're supporting their employees participating in the democratic process? Um, Tracy, you mentioned, you know, posting um, sites and things. I think um, a lot of places, most places have early voting, like a two week period of early voting. So setting those dates up so that folks can see them. Um, What are the places, because uh, at least here in Jacksonville, you can early vote any place. Mm-hmm. So what are the places that are within a one mile radius of the job um, where folks can go and early vote? And um, businesses also have political capital. And so is there an, even an opportunity to if there is not um, a voting site within a one mile radius of your job where folks are coming? Is that an opportunity to work with some other businesses and say, hey, can we get a, a station here or can we have a, a polling site? This being be designated as a polling site, even on Election Day can, you know, um, maybe not a hospital because a hospital is, is um, very unique and a lot of traffic in and out is certainly not 
good. Um, but is there a, a some place next door um, that can be a designated voting site so that on that day folks can stop here, vote on their way into work? There are just a lot of opportunities. And I think corporations have political capital um, to be able to ask for some of those things. And that's on election day itself, but also in advance, um, things like voter registration drives can happen in the workplace. There, are, We have great local organizations like here in Jacksonville. There's the League of Women Voters. There are others um, that would be happy to come to your workplace and you know bring voter registration forms and let folks know how they can get engaged, um, particularly if you have younger employees who might never have been part of the process before. Um, so that's something that can be done in advance. And um, there's also a lot of research that shows that people are more likely to vote if they have a plan for how they will vote. And so that's when you talk about providing information. It's about, you know, what are the locations near me, but also just, you know, asking your your employees, not you know, we support you voting. Have you made a plan to vote? Have you thought about what day you'd like mm -hmm. to go? Have you checked to see what sites are open that day? Do you know that if you go on election day, you can't necessarily go to the early voting mm -hmm. sites? Some of those things, um, helping them come up with a plan to vote. Well, I also think this is a great opportunity, um, especially as some organizations struggle with what their social media content is going to be, right? Opportunities to post stories of employees like why they vote um, or why they think it's important. Uh, every employee who votes and gets an I vote sticker gets a picture taken and gets posted. Um, you know, that could be internally on the website or again through social media. Some things to celebrate people engaging in that process because then that's an outward demonstration to your employees, but it's also an outward demonstration to your customer base that this is important and something that you value. So I think that you know, it's not necessarily something that employees, employers often or always think about, but there are lots of creative ways mm -hmm. that really don't cost any money, mm -hmm. um, but can really encourage uh, their employer employees to participate in the process. Yeah. Love but that idea. I would also add, I think, you know, we always know that, A, there are more people who don't vote than do. That is a... a challenge that we have but that's particularly true in midterm elections right mm -hmm. we're not voting for the president i'm not going and so what are some things that employers can do to really help bolster voting in times when it seems to lag um you know what well let's start here what do you all think are some of the reasons that people are not voting in midterm elections or in elections period and what are some ways that employers might be able to address those issues <laughs> um i think you know i think there are a lot you know there are a lot of reasons i think um one is I, I, again i think there's just not they might be hearing ads around them but there's not a lot of just good information about what seats are up right now what decisions are being made by people at these levels? You know, I think people intuitively understand what the job of the president is, and maybe they understand the job of their Congress people, but they probably don't understand as well what their state Supreme Court's job is versus the U.S. Supreme Court. They might not understand what the job of their state senator or representative is versus the at the federal level or, or local jobs like the Soil and Water Conservation District. What, what are they doing? So some of it, I think, is information and not understanding how significant some of the job, the decisions are that are being made at those levels. And then I, I think there's discouragement. Um, you know, I, I think that there are a lot of folks right now who are just sort of discouraged by the system in general mm -hmm. and feel like um, may not see themselves represented in some of the candidates. And, and there, there's nothing employers can do, I think, about the, the you know, candidate quality or the national dynamics around voting. But I think what they can help with is that information piece and just understanding, you know, that if, if you choose to disengage, these decisions will be made and they will be made for our community without your input and without the input of you know, your coworkers. So. Yeah, it's, it's certainly the, the voter apathy, not feeling connected to any of the systems right now and not really caring. People um, sometimes genuinely don't know. Um, mm -hmm. They are not folks are starting to sort of you know turn off the TV even because the ads um, are sometimes just so, you know, visceral and, mm -hmm. you know, it, so it discourages them. Um, and 
Um, for younger folks, sometimes it's just they they don't identify with any of the candidates, and not that the candidates aren't high quality, but um, they haven't seen a side of their candidates that makes them want to to vote. And so, um, I agree. I, I don't know that it's necessarily the employee uh, the employer's responsibility to you know bring in the candidates and things like that. But I do think when people understand why voting is so important and and, you know, there's the because, you know, the legacy and the history of voting and those things that are certainly true. But on a fundamental level, how does this impact your day to day life? Um, I think people need just that that simple bite size um, level of information. Um, and I don't think companies have to invent that themselves. A lot of companies in particular in the wake of George Floyd have funded lots of grassroots organizations whose sole function is to get more civic engagement. And so it's a phenomenal opportunity for them to partner with some of those organizations and they can come in and run sessions about who these folks are. Here's the, you know, in a nonpartisan way, which nonprofits have to be nonpartisan um, for the most part anyway, um, but who these candidates are, here's what the role is, here's what they do, um, and allow folks to ask questions. And when those organizations are hosting, you know, um, Ed educational opportunities for the community um, that the, the company can then point their employees to, here's our partner doing this thing, let's get informed. Yeah. And, you know, as it, Kim, as I listened to you talk, especially the early part about folks just sort of tuning out because things are getting so caustic, I think uh, maybe I, I changed my own mind about whether employees can have a role in sort of changing that dynamic. And I, and this is not going to happen between now and election day. This is a longer term project, but workplaces are one of the few places where we are all still regularly interacting with people who might not agree with us politically. And so that actually makes them a really fantastic place to be able to have, you know, honest, respectful dialogue that can enhance understanding and, and hopefully start to chip away at you know, I, I think a lot of folks are, are hearing things that um, we're all living in bubbles now. You know, I think we all acknowledge that, that we, we live a little more in a bubble than we used to. And the, the workplace would be a great place if employers can have the courage to host some conversations, things like the race card conversations or, you know, conversations where they're willing to talk about civic and political issues and just say, we're, we're here to learn from each other. Mm -hmm. um, I think that could actually go a long way in reducing some of that frustration. And I think that's actually a really interesting point because I agree for the most part we're siloed in our personal lives. Mm -hmm. Professionally is where we really interact with people of difference, but we don't often hear what those differences are. And as you know, yeah. the polls keep telling us that we're becoming more and more polarized people are seeing people on the other side as the enemy mm -hmm. or detrimental or completely clueless or whatever mm -hmm. the negative adjective descriptor you'd want to use. Having conversations to talk about some of these issues just so that you can hear why somebody believes that. Because I think that's the piece that's oftentimes missing. Mm -hmm. You believe X, Y, Z because of this well i believe abc because of this and it starts to bring some context to mm -hmm. that so that we can maybe get a little closer because i do still believe that we actually share more than we have in difference mm -hmm. but it's harder to see it but employers can be an interesting facilitator in that as well as I think that does a lot to sort of set up that this is a safe space mm -hmm. to be myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you, of course, have to make sure that you're reinforcing that, right? Yeah. That there isn't any negative or unintended consequences from those conversations. But if they're facilitated well and people are really hearing each other, that could go a long way to sort of helping to bridge that divide so that's yeah. I think a really interesting point. And build a positive corporate culture too. I mean, mm -hmm. you have to. Uh, you, it building some sort of solidarity and understanding among your team. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to switch gears a little bit because you mentioned earlier, Kim, that corporations oftentimes have PACs, that they have things that they are politically supporting. And so I know my experience in corporate America 
was unless I was a part of the pack, I didn't know about the pack. I had no idea what they did. I had no idea what the issues were, et cetera. Should employers be sharing that information about what they're doing in their political engagement and why? Um, so the the company that I was a part of that had the pack, they did share because they wanted folks to 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 join the pack and um, they would share what was on their agenda, what they were prioritizing. So they were very transparent. Um, and I think they got a lot of employee support because mm-hmm. of it. And so I think it goes a long way to to tell your employees, um, you know, mm-hmm. what you are doing civically, because the other side of this is what are you valuing? Um, that employees get to see because, you know, you're sending lobbyists to talk with lawmakers about issues X, Y, and Z. um, And that says a lot about what you're valuing. And so I think it gives employees just a a bit more insight. um, And honestly, they can see themselves aligned or not, right? And they also get an opportunity, a, a very rare opportunity, I think, to sometimes see political figures that they would not ordinarily have voted for or have seen in the, in in a new light because this this particular person who's in office is caring for the same thing that you care about or is caring for the same thing that my company cares about and i think that does a little bit more to say okay we do have some things in common you might not be i might not have voted for you um, you might not be from the same party I'm from, but it humanizes folks, I think, in a way, too, because you're not only talking about um, sort of the bills and things, but you're also talking about the people mm-hmm. who are creating those laws. And so it gives you some really interesting insight into the political process overall. And I think companies should absolutely um, do a, a uh, you know, better internal marketing job of making sure that employees know that this is an opportunity that's available to them and that this is a resource that we use to, you know, leverage, you know, better outcomes for you as employees mm. and also the people that we serve. Mm-hmm. I love that. And it, may, um, it makes me think of sort of going back to that sort of what's your obligation and what's the payoff for you question. And I think if the company has values and there are things that are priorities and important and related to the, the mission of the company and the you know, the bottom line of the company, um, I think it's just as a matter of you know decency, it's important to be transparent about what those are with your employees so they have a chance to opt in or opt out, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's the obligation. But I also think there's, again, that payoff because, um, again, particularly in the last two and a half years, it has been challenging for employers to hold on to employees and I think the companies that have done a really good job of employees feeling tied to the mission and committed to the mission of the company um, are doing better at retention. And so, it, you know, if your employees are able to see some alignment there, you're going to deepen that connection and there's going to be, again, a, p- a payoff. So what happens, though, in situations where the alignment isn't there, right? Um, and I'm thinking about... Uh, opportunities where the business was very interested in the business or Mm -hmm. one particular aspect of the business where the employees were interested in things that were happening in the community, Mm -hmm. things that were happening with them personally. And they were like, no, the the pack is the business because Mm -hmm. it's for this organization and that's what we're focused on. Um, So for organizations where their pack has not been structured to really take in the concerns of the employees and there is likely not alignment. How should those organizations address that? Is that something where they shouldn't tell their employees about what's happening and they should just proceed for what's going on with the business? They should let them know and take the risk or they should maybe add to their agenda? How do you see the best outcome for those types of PACs in organizations? So corporations certainly don't, they're not obligated to share that information, right? But I think it is a very nice to have. (laughs) Um, And I think this goes in the spirit of transparency where um, sometimes the transparency is, we're, we're going for this call and we understand that it may not 
be what everyone agrees with. Um, and that's their decision to make. Mm -hmm. um, and I think employees certainly understand that. But it, when it feels like a sort of, you know, I, I'm hiding the, the rock behind my, you know, my back, you can't see it. And I'm just making moves. You don't know what I'm folks feel bamboozled. Mm -hmm. Um, and you don't want your employees to feel bamboozled because then that shows that you really don't inv inv uh, don't value their um, ability to handle difficult um, mm -hmm. topics and conversations. Um, because sometimes the answer is just this is the route we have to go and this is the route we're going. And we can't always take your input in, in this decision. Um, for the times we can, we absolutely mm -hmm. will. But for the times we cannot, we hope that you understand um, that this is how we're moving forward. And so I, I never am going to advocate for, you know, not telling. Um, but tell what you can and tell why. Mm -hmm. um, and I think people are adults and they can make decisions on whether or not this is a deal breaker for them. Is this like this thing takes me out of this company completely? Or is this one of those things where I learned to compartmentalize, say that is the business, this is what we're doing over here in the areas that I'm really, you know, caring about. And so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay with that. Or if they are just going to be on board with what you've proposed. Yeah, because it's hard to um, guarantee that anything stays completely secret forever, right? Mm -hmm. And so wouldn't you, as an employee, wouldn't you rather, you know, rather than finding out in that way where you feel like the wool's been pulled over your eyes, wouldn't you rather have your the company say, I, you know, here's what we were doing. And, and they're, they're not... I mean, these aren't arbitrary decisions, right? right. I mean, hopefully mm -hmm. if the company is making the decision to in, to make investment in particular candidates or particular parties or particular pieces of campaigns, they're doing it because they believe there's a good reason. And mm -hmm. if you can communicate that to employees and explain why it will be, even if they might not agree, here's why it will be good, here's why it will be good for you, here's why it will be good for the company, then, yeah, trust people to understand. And that will probably go over better if you're doing the piece that Kim also mentioned, which is when we can listen to you, we are. Mm -hmm. So taking an interest in what, you know, what are the issues that employees care about? What are the, um, the things that there's already some interest in some activity here and that the company can support, even if it might not have been on a radar screen before. And if they're, they're doing that and they're actually listening in times when they can, I, I think people can understand that. And I think it's also an interesting time to really look at the values yeah. of the corporation because generally that's where you find a lot of employee alignment. Mm -hmm. I am aligned with the values, especially now that's becoming more and more important to employees. Mm -hmm. So is there something that is in your values that you can push with a candidate in addition to the business issues. Because I think that's the other thing too. Sometimes yeah. we get very singularly focused. I need this issue to go through. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe that's still the top of line. But while we're here talking, mm -hmm. let me also sit this here. So I think that, you know, there are some opportunities to still make sure that it's aligned with the business, mm -hmm. but it's also going to connect with employees. Yeah. Because maybe this, um, you know, finance regulation isn't really going to resonate with your employees, but it's extremely important to our business. But um, this aspect of resources for the community mm -hmm. or this position in education really does connect with a lot of what we're seeing as an organization and our employees understand and connect to that as well. And I think as, as an employer, I think part of part of that sort of transparent moment where you're saying we're, we have to do this or we have to, mm -hmm you know, support this candidate or we have to support this bill, um, a part of what they also have to do is, you know, is it just a, a couple of folks who are saying that this is like detrimental to what we're doing? Or is there a critical mass who are saying that this is going to be detrimental? Um, and again, it might not affect your decision either way, but that's a that's a data point that as an employer you have to consider because um, your employers are, your employees are there, they are still a representation of what's happening outside of your workspace. And so if you have a particular subset of your employees saying this is a challenge, they mm -hmm. may be, you know, reflecting a broader community concern that could come back and affect your bottom line yeah. if, you know, should this be come a community, um, you know, sort of, yeah. um, you know, if, if the headline reads, 
we did X, Y, and Z, Mm -hmm. this is the fallout. And so I think it's up to the employer, too, to just sort of take it in and decide if, you know, make sure that it's still, it's still value aligned, right? But understanding that the consequences, whatever they might be. Well, I think it's really interesting that you mentioned a data point because I I immediately thought, where would they get that data? So how would you advise corporations to get information from their employees to guide some of their civic engagement, um, potentially PAC activity, is that the annual employee survey? Is that a specific one? Is that just random conversations? Um, is that it come to the political action committee meeting and we're going to discuss it? Like, how would you advise employers to get that data? Hopefully you're you're doing it on you're communicating and getting all sorts of feedback on a regular basis mm-hmm. so that when you interject a question around, you know, policy and PAC activity, it's not a foreign concept. But I think you, if you don't have a mechanism by which to get feedback from employees, I think you have to start there with some more basic things Mm -hmm. um, and then work your way up to the more complex things like PAC activity. Right, right. You probably don't (laughs) want to start there. Um, And and it probably varies a lot based on the size of your company and you know your company best. If you're really small, you can have a, you know, a, a lunch meeting where you just at, you, folks can bounce ideas off the walls. If you're a bigger company, then you probably do have to find a way to work it into one of your existing systems. Um, and, and employers will know best what works for them. Um, but I've also, you know, there are companies that, and there are several locally actually that have um, philanthropic committees or have civic engagement committees. And, mm-hmm. um, and so there's a, you know, a committee of employees who's, um, are charged with, you know, getting the feedback of the employee base and sort of representing the employee base and coming up with ideas and, and giving feedback. Mm-hmm. And, and that would, it gives you a built-in venue mm-hmm. to um, not just talk about political issues, right? But also then to, to think about how can we be civically engaged? How can we, how can our volunteerism as a company and our philanthropy as a company be mean as much as it can as possible to our employees and to our community. And so I, I think that's a great idea if you have a company big enough to sustain something like that. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, now just getting down to the bottom line. Um, as we've had this discussion, we've talked about the importance of civic engagement and ways that corporations and organizations can help promote that um, as employers. If you were going to have one big takeaway for employers from this conversation, something that they can do to really be effective in this area, what would your one takeaway be for them? Um, I'm going to cheat and have a short-term one and a longer-term one. And the, I think the short-term one is the the general the um, the midterm elections are are really close, and so. What's the one thing that you can do between now and the election to encourage your employees to be able to participate in the process? So, you know, think about sending out an email and encouraging folks to go vote. Think about sharing some information. Think about, um, you know, giving time off to vote if you can. So just think of what is one thing that you as a company can do to encourage participation, you know, next week. Um, And then I think in the longer term, it is this idea of how are you um, thinking of um, your employees as being engaged in a conversation with you about civic engagement. How can you get input from your employees about what's important to them and to the community? And how can you share information about um, what's important to the company? And making that a two-way conversation and not an occasional you know, email blast, um, making it more substantive and more meaningful. Um, you took the words right out of my mouth, so I, I, I have to, to think about this. Um, what companies can do to really foster civic engagement um, amongst their employees, I think, is to um, really show that it is aligned with their values, mm-hmm. um, that participating in the democratic process um, 
voting in, in, in other ways. Um, we'll start with voting, right? But you can talk about the other ways. Um, how this aligns with the values that you set forth as a company and um, giving people extra 30 minutes to an hour just to, to go and perform that civic duty whenever it occurs. And I would say, I, I'm going to cheat as well, um, that social media is mm -hmm. your friend. Mm -hmm. And so especially in these days leading up to the election, information you put out about early voting, um, the fact that you've got, you're encouraging people to vote where they can vote, links to sites, nonpartisan sites to get information, um, anything that you can do to help educate and inform people about what their options are. And again, like you said, encouraging people to make a voting plan. You're going to leave early this day. Who's going to take the kids to school? Uh, you know, what have you mm -hmm. to get this done to make sure that you actually vote. The other thing that I would say, and again, I think this is more of that long-term strategy, is really thinking about building civic engagement into your corporate social responsibility plan, mm -hmm. right? Because there are so many aspects of it. Again, so if your employees are really concerned about the environment, well then not only are we going to do park and beach cleanups, right? Um, mm -hmm. But we're also going to reduce our emissions that we're, we're as a company by 5% over these number of years. We're going to install a, a plugs the electric car plugs in our parking lots we need two of those and we're going to push for legislation that supports it i think the more that you have a through line mm -hmm. in all aspects of your business what you're actually doing in the building what you're telling employees what you're promoting and pushing for um, in the political arena those align you start to build more trust as well as it's very clear to employees what you value and so, so good. I think that really helps, again, to build that trust and Absolutely. your retention because Absolutely. you value what I value. And now I'm far more likely to be engaged as well as to stay. So and be a great employee for you. Absolutely. All right. Well, ladies, it has been a joy and a privilege to have you in the conference room today. Thank you for talking about this very, very important topic. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us for the Business of Race podcast today. And we definitely want to make sure we encourage everyone to participate in the democratic process and go vote. See you in the conference room next week.